What did you think of my wedding present? I like my presence at least acknowledged, you know. It was beautiful. And sweet. She was quite a boat, the true love, wasn't she? Was and is. Oh, she was your. She was your, all right. That was a clip from one old but fantastic movie called the philadelphia story i thought it'd be fun to throw a clip in as we move into our next segment i have no idea what the definition of yar is but maybe we'll find out maybe sam might know that anyway i want to introduce the guest um he is the author of two books the last the first one is called the you can buy both of these on amazon uh and i have and they're both really really good and really interesting especially if you're a sports guy in the second book. Uh, the first book is called The Last Philadelphia Gentleman, The Sunset of an American Ruling Class. And the goal, that's the first book, uh, which really looks at like Philadelphia society and where it all came from and where it disappeared to. Uh, the second book is called, which is, you know, I love, uh, The Golden Age of Ivy League Basketball from Bill Bradley to Penn's Final Four, 1964, 1979. And I'll add this to Paul's intro arguably the best athlete to ever come out of look what i'm wearing guys germantown academy please welcome paul hutter yay oh welcome to the show thank you for being here okay. great to see you tim it's um, been, been a while so uh paul i'll give you a little bit of history he he went we went to the same high school i had no business going there but i did because my brother was a decent athlete who was a an a, an end for Paul, who was the quarterback. Uh, and I think they thought I was a good athlete. And boy, I sure fooled them. Um, Canadian, so, <laughs> so uh, but then you went to Princeton and went to work at Wall Street. And then you started writing books. And the books, I just, I know you love them. They were passion projects for you. So, but just tell us about the the first book, which is, no, tell us about the second book, which is sort of looking at old Philadelphia. Uh, yeah, well, uh, actually, the, the second book the, the uh, could be the story of Sam Chu and his family in, in some respects, because uh, uh, it essentially goes back to the uh, beginning of uh, uh, the, you know, the period of uh, when the uh, uh, People were coming over from the religious wars and Sam's family in 1607. John Chu. How many how many generations ago was that, Sam, when you when John Chu came over? What would that uh I think eleven or twelve. Uh, eleven or twelve? Yeah, so 16, 16, 20, 1622, he came over on the uh on the right. you know, the faith, hope, and charity, and then his wife and family came over after that. And they went to Jamestown and then they migrated north from there right when and it's I believe that sam's family also came over in 16 uh, or, or john chu may have come over with uh, john smith yeah in 1607 mm -hmm. and then went back to england came back in 1622 and uh, uh so the sam's uh ancestors were among the oldest uh uh, immigrants to the United States. In fact, Sam's family, the Chu family, probably has the most distinguished pedigree, uh, possibly of any family in the country. Yeah, I mean, funny. 1607, uh, you know, 12, 13 generations. It might even be, uh, the, the number of generations is incredible. But uh, so the, the the book basically is tells the story of uh, uh, the WASP uh, leadership in the country and how uh, during the religious wars of uh, the 1600s, uh, people like Sam's family came over and uh, developed the, uh, uh, the the principles of free markets, the Enlightenment, and so forth. And uh, eventually, by the 1700s, uh, Philadelphia was being uh, had become the uh, largest city uh, in, in the colonies. And uh, by 1776, the Declaration of Independence and uh, Madisonian democracy, the Constitution, were created by the WASP uh, uh, cohort, and uh, Sam's family was critical to that. And of course, Princeton University, where I went to school, and you know, Princeton, Harvard, and Yale, and 
the whole uh, the whole background that led to the Industrial Revolution and then the Gilded Age with the Vanderbilts, Rockefellers, Morgans, and so forth. So that's basically the uh, you know the background of the movie. But uh, early on in the, or, of the book, but early on in the book, I talk about the uh, uh, I don't know if you guys recall the in 1978 the Preppy Handbook came out. Uh, yeah, sure. Lisa Bernbach. She had a little. Uh, she's been back in the news recently because of the E. Jean Carroll libel suit against Trump. She Lisa Bernbach was a witness in that trial, and I've seen her on some. Right, I, I read something about that. Uh, yeah. Well, the, the the first part of the book, the early chapters, uh, are essentially a updated recreation of the. Uh, uh, so many aspects of the preppy handbook, the, uh, the background, going, going back to the, uh, sh uh, chivalry and the British, uh, aristocratic gentlemen, what, uh, what are gentlemen's all about? And that, uh, the, the British aristocratic gentlemen, uh, really turned into, uh, evolved into the, uh, uh, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant gentlemen and, uh, right. which, of which Sam is a, uh, I, uh, he's a great, carrier. The, 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 old, the ultimate lost gentleman, one could say. And mm. uh, that, that part of the book you know, it goes through the li lifestyle, clubs, uh, dress, schools, neighborhoods, and so forth of uh, uh, the wasp gentleman. And uh, it's, uh, I always found the preppy handbook to be, it was kind of fun and it was all, kind, but it was sort of like there was a satire to it. What I like about your book, Paul is that i mean there was a little like a wink wink nod nod with her book kind right. of like i'm we're exposing all this what i like about your book is that it's really a, a history book is what it is it's and it's Definitely. written Definitely. It, it's written very very well it's very interesting but it's a history book as opposed to i'm um, i'm exposing something here and making fun of it not that anything's wrong with the preppy handbook i'm not knocking her or the book, but your your book is different. So Sam, tell us about, because I know this is in the book as well, your home, your ancestral home, not yours personally, you never lived at Cliveden, did you? Yes. Okay, yeah. tell us about Cliveden, because this is a real place that your family lived in. Yeah. Built. Well, I grew up the first 12 years of my life on a farm in Radnor. We had my my family had about 300 acres. It was absolutely beautiful and bucolic. And Still my is. grandfather was kind of a dilettante. And and my grand, but he had a lot of land because Benjamin Chu was William Penn's best friend and lawyer. And the Penn family just gave land to everybody. So we had all this land. Yeah. But my my father, the Cliveden, C-L-I-V-E-D-E-N. A lot of people say Cliveden, but it's not. It's Cliveden. It was named after the Astor's mansion in england <clears throat> and uh it was built by benjamin chu the chief justice of, of the supreme court of pennsylvania the first one and william penn's lawyer in 1750 he built the house it's considered to be even more than monticello it's in germantown which now is not a particularly great area of philadelphia sadly but it was built as his country house he lived in town in Philadelphia, and Germantown is 13 miles I love north. The country. Yeah, north. And, and it was 13 yeah. miles. But in the summer, to get there in 1700, you had to take horses and carriages. And sure. they were lucky to have that house because they avoided the horrible yellow fever plague that Paul knows about, which wiped out half of Philadelphia. But the Battle of Germantown took place at the house. And and my father inherited the house from his uncle, Sam, who was also named Sam. And but with the provision that my great aunt could live there, she was a spinster and she lived there until she died at the age of 94 wow. in 1959. And in 1961, we, we couldn't sell the house because it was too important historically having had the Battle of Germantown fought there. And so and no uh, offers were coming so in. We moved, yeah, so we moved in and we lived there. Couples in there and a lot of battle. Uh... You know, Washington's troops were surprised by the British who right. took refuge inside the house and they badly defeated Washington's troops on the morning of uh, October 7th, 1777. And that's what precipitated Washington having to go to Valley Forge to regroup for that winter. I never knew that. That's yeah. so... I I knew that 
our alma mater, Paul, our alma mater, Germantown Academy, was used as a hospital as a result of that battle. But I never knew that's why he went to Valley Forge. Yeah. They actually went out to him to Hope Lodge on Bethlehem Pike. And then uh, right after the Battle of Germantown, then they went to Valley Forge uh, uh, for the winter. And the Potts family allowed them to uh, have access to Valley Forge. Which was a Germantown Another Academy Germantown. family. Another yes. Germantown Academy family. Um, Paul, let me ask you something. Because I know, you know, I came in from Doylestown. That school, and it's a wildly successful school, was that school sort of an eye opener for you coming there to that? Like for me from Doylestown, I know Pat and I have this experience, my brother, Pat, you know, it was just like, wow, these are people we've never even, we heard about, you know, but like the Potts family, it, it was really for us an eye opener that, that these old revolutionary families were sort of like part of this world. Um. Yeah, it was interesting. I, I actually came from McLean, Virginia. I was living in McLean, Virginia until 1964. Then my father came to Philadelphia for business. And uh, so we were looking at what schools uh, you know, might be a good fit. We moved to Chestnut Hill, the Chestnut Hill area. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was Chestnut Hill Academy, Penn Charter, and uh, Germantown Academy. And it just seemed like a, a good fit. The, the, I met the people there and Coach Turner and others, and I happened to be a pretty good uh, pretty good athlete. And it's, it's funny, one of, one of my early memories in 1965 when I was in eight, eighth grade second form and yeah. playing sports, one of the alums came up to me. It, it wasn't Thatcher Longstreth, but someone along those lines. He said, Paul, I, I think you can go to Princeton. And I think you have what it takes to go to Princeton. So that, that was a great incentive at that point. And I uh, continued to work hard and uh, uh, befriended your brother, Pat Stack, yeah. and, uh, the rest of the uh, I'm I just going to brag for you. Pat didn't help Pat, much. But, uh, Paul really was. <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, Paul, but I believe you made first team all city in two sports. Uh, right. Yes, that's I, I. I'm telling you, everybody, that's unbelievable. It, well, city as large as Philadelphia, because there are only five guys on the basketball team, and there's only one quarterback. And Paul made first team in both of those. It's pretty real. Real, real quick sports uh, memory in, in my my senior year, the big Pennsylvania regional all star game at Franklin Field. I was the quarterback uh, for the city team versus the suburban team, and. Uh, on my team was John Capaletti, who went to Penn State and won the Heisman Trophy. Right. Uh, Randy Grossman went to Penn State or went to uh, Pittsburgh Steelers and won four Super Bowl rings. And Billy White shoes Johnson, the greatest, one of the greatest uh, kick returners in NFL history. And I won the MVP of the game, so that was the highlight. It's all been downhill. I can guarantee you it's all been downhill ever since. <laughs> you and me both. Uh, okay. We're gonna... No, you've been, you've been going up to. I mean, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm still hanging in there in show business, which I don't recommend people getting into. <laughs> uh, we're going to take our final break. I'm talking to Paul Hutter. He's got two books on Amazon, The Last Philadelphia Gentleman, The Sunset of an American Ruling Class, and his second book, the golden age of Ivy League basketball from Bill Bradley to Penn's Final Four, 64 to 79. You're listening to It's Radio with TV's Tim Stack.